Hey, 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 my name is Paul Schlungs and welcome to some more of the latter horror visual novel. Uh, we started a new route and we will continue this route. Okay. I can still check that. I wonder if while being Hana, for example, I can still change the relationship points here. That would be kind of interesting. Anyway, Luke is dressed to the nines as he is and he looks ready for whatever that I will throw at him. His butler and wallet wait at his side, just in case he isn't as ready as he looks. Ah, uh, sure, that is normal. What is confusing is the fact that he is on his way out of the penthouse. Considering we won't have anywhere to go until much later? Where are you going? I am to attend the Triad Autumn Tasting. I do believe I informed you of this two weeks ago. Yes, and might I remind you that I had stricken that off your schedule? Because one, the doctor told you to stop consuming so much alcohol. And two, I informed you a few days ago about the open house we are going to attend in its place. I've even found this marvelous interior designer. Mary Ann McCullough. That's not her name, goddammit. <laughs> it's a three and a half hour drive to Cardiff. I don't have time for this. Yes, you do. This is like that little party you threw all over again. You don't inform me of it, and you expect me to stay and be a gracious host when I have business elsewhere. Hmm. You know how I operate, Hana. Unless this was penciled in, I am sticking to my schedule. Wow. If I may intrude, the madam is correct. Your physician did insist you moderate your drinking, unless you wish to incur acute pancreatitis. And you did have this open house penciled in last Wednesday morning. Bullocks, I don't remember doing so. Well, you did. While very hungover, in fact. He did. Moaned about me being too loud, but gave in after some pushing. Perhaps this was a bit too cruel and manipulative of me, but... Whose side are you on? Come on, Luke. You promised we'd do whatever I want this weekend. Yeah, she curses and tries to keep this relationship, dammit. Gordon Bennett, fine. I am giving this house tour of yours a chance. But, if it proves to be a waste of time, I am going to Cardiff and you are going to take a cab home. Are we clear? It's just a bit of a husband and wife did for that, isn't it? All cops have their arguments. Yeah, sure, it's just that. Once the honeymoon phase, fun, uh, honeymoon phase is over, as they seem to call it, reality sets in that you and your partner might not always see eye to eye. Perhaps it has been the years. Some of them is nothing to scoff at. But it's not a lot at the same time. I just cannot bloody believe I agreed to this. I was really looking forward to the triad tasting. For sometimes I think it's something a bit more than just simple disagreements, and I had to stop myself from wondering where we went wrong. There's always the triad Christmas tasting in Manchester next month, and that'll only be an hour and a half drive. Have I been neglectful? Have I offended? Have I acted shamefully? Yes, but Cardiff... Certainly, any problem can be discussed. As long as he doesn't turn me away. Well, there goes my good mood. Are you happy now, Hana? Remain silent or defend myself? Defend her. I mean, she has a point. Yes! I am very happy, Luke, because for once in a very long time, we are doing what I want. Okay. Plus. Ooh. I'm ecstatic. Understood. And this would be perfect if you stop acting like a child who needs their nappy changed. Uh -huh. We will be leaving after lunch for the Ermengarde Mansion. You are going to park your rear in the car and keep mum. 
And you are going to behave during the tour. Do you say Luke looks a bit shocked at my little outburst? He opened and closed his mouth a few times, trying to reply before he crossed his arms to look like, well, a moping child. Any more rules for this little excursion of yours, your highness? No wine. <laughs> no wine? <laughs> Unacceptable! I am already not allowed to the tasting, and you would deprive me of that simple pleasure? If I see you take one sip today, I will put the stocks under lock and key. Do you understand me? Don't forget the bottles he keeps in his dresser. Whose side are you on? <laughs> I like this guy. How many times in one day can you ask that? As many times as I need you, traitor. Ah, the butler is a genius. The ride to the mansion is quiet. With Luke having stared out the window the entire way, not paying attention to anything around him. Meanwhile, I'm conflicted. I know if I should apologize for changing his plans. Like that. No. But by the time we arrive at the mansion, I see his eyes light up in genuine interest. Apologizing is the last thing on my mind. The whole affair with the airman guard I mentioned is certainly an interesting experience. The place had been renovated and restored by the owners to what they claim to be ac acceptable standards. The mansion itself looks like something befitting a fair tale of or a period piece. It is tastefully decorated and, with a little bit of love and attention, I'm sure it can be a place look and I can call home. And the number of other prospective buyers that have come from the powerful and wealthy of Luxburg certainly did not disappoint. Marking his estate as prime property. The Lees are amongst the group who went with the Rose Woman, and I saw a few no other notable faces, for I did not really feel like mingling. Unfortunately, for every one of them, their rights are interested in buying. Will and who? What's been banging my mind, however, is that Isabel. What is her problem? I still don't quite understand what's happening. One moment she's scrambling to give us the paperwork to finance the sale, then she's panicking over some sort of prank letter or another. Dear me, is Isabel alright? It is apparent, with the way she shakes and by the pallor of her skin, something has really shaken her up. Isabella, do you need me to call that ambulance? I am worried. But it will be best if she is attended by some too by someone more familiar to her, like her partner. But even then, the girl refuses Rose's offer drink and looks as about ready to make a run for it. No, I'm just feeling a bit out of it. Excuse me, I'll be back. I just need to catch my breath. And she does so, just as I predicted, and her partner falls like a concerned mother. There is an awkward air among us as we are left in the wake of whatever that was. The other murmur and gossip with each other, speaking of the poor daft girl telling the tale to whoever was no audience to the act in the first place. It doesn't take long for the woman rose to return full and society into the study for what I rightfully assume is damage control. Rose invites Marianne into hoping to apologize to her as well. Now you got her name correctly. But the woman refuses, saying she's not one of her clients anyway. That leaves myself, Rose, and Luke. The last all too eager to make himself comfortable inside his known debt already claimed as his own. I can't apologize enough about what just happened. Please forgive Isabella. She's been under a lot of pressure lately. She's young and all those rumors about this being haunted just got to her head. Yeah, rumors! Mm hmm and it must be this terrible heat too not a drop of rain for days now are you sure it is wise to just let her go like that where is the poor dear she might get hurt she's more likely to hurt somebody else given what just happened i told her to sit down and take a break already rang someone to pick her up too that might be for the best dear but please we're here to talk about the mansion yes Yes. Why, I absolutely adore it! Don't you, Luke? 
Some of the rooms will certainly have to be repurposed. We want to change the appliances and have Marianne lead on the decor, but the whole thing is just lovely. And you got her name not correct incorrectly again. I guess. It's certainly a lot roomier than our penthouse. Exactly! Lots of space for guests, parties, a lot of room for little ones to run around too. Let's not discuss that right now, Buttercup. Anyway, I do think it would be a shame to let this mansion slip past us. But you haven't even finished touring the house. Well, we like what we've seen. I'm making her job easier for her. Am I not? <laughs> no need for long, so long price negotiations. We can just sign a contract and close the deal. Really, you'd think the woman would be more happy about an easy sale. I know how these estate agents worked, how long they had to wait, and how much they had to spend even just for a single sale. Why, she would be jumping for joy by now. I'm sure the commission on this mission is nothing to sneeze at, even if she has to split it with the Isabel girl. Huh, do you think we could have horses here? Yes, those do sound nice, love. Anyway, if anyone else is interested in buying this property, I assure you that I'm able and willing to give a better offer. I... A vineyard would be nice. Or maybe a... Hmm. And we do reward our people quite generously, Rose. So if I were you, I would start on that paperwork. Helicopter pad. <laughs> I pause. And there's a small moment of complete silence where Rose and I just stare incredulously at Luke. It is an unspoken understanding, the role between the two of us that we have to put on an act. With our social standing, where image matters, it is also important to avoid making enemies. And to follow this rule is an easy feat for me. From my I have been the well-trained social butterfly, gracious and graceful, while complete opposite of myself. Luke, on the other hand. Oh, wait, what, Luke? No, what? Whatever would we need a helipad for? To have a place where a helicopter can land. Well, he likes to play the fool sometimes, even if he's anything but. As he throws me a right smile, I shake my head and peck on Rose over. This is to be our home, and there's nothing sh she or anyone else can do to change my mind. I mean, there is someone who can change your mind, but... You don't know that person yet. Isabella knows her. You don't. Uh, this is a place that speaks of power, importance, and at the same time of safety and comfort. Okay, I... I would quite disagree with the last sentence. Perhaps we can even have our family here. Uh, I would not recommend it. There is definitely no better gift than this for our special date. There are better gifts. Why, everything here is absolutely wonderful. Yeah, sure. Well, except for this, I'm pointing in the study. It looks like a bad fake of an Edward Munch painting. Here's the deal. I'm willing to pay 10% higher than your listing price. Mm. I don't know where that picture is, but whatever. If anyone tries to outbid us, just add another 5%. I doubt anyone can, of course. Or, you know what? Just add 15% to the listing price and we can sign all the paperwork now. I guess, if that's what you want, that won't be any trouble. I don't have all the papers now. Didn't think this would be a quick sell. I'll have copies sent to you so you can look over them. And if you'd still like to finish the rest of the tour with Isabella's group, you're more than welcome to. No, I think we're good here. We'd appreciate a private tour of the place a lot more, I think. Alright. Should I let Marianne in, then? Marianne. Alright, she's been waiting outside the side this whole time, hasn't she? I'll need to have a little chat with her to move this little mansion project forward. Please do. Well, there is a look of apprehension when the other woman enters the study. Yet, like a professional, I see one when she steals herself and masks her worry. Admirable. We have this project then? Of course. Will you be needing anything from us? 
Having the floor plans would be a great start, just so that I can look at them beforehand. And if you could tell me when you're available for a meeting so that I can include it in my calendar? Oh, is a meeting really all that necessary, Marianne? I guess we can send Johans to help you out. You two can start by getting rid of this ugly painting. Rehush falls upon the room at my request. What painting? And lo and behold, the painting is gone. In its place, a mirror stands, which leads me to look at my own confused expression. Odd. Well, no matter. Back to the topic at hand. Marianne, dear, <laughs> we are simply far too busy to meet up. Oh boy. So after, just after that uh, moment when Isabella was going kind of nuts and her papers fell to the ground and Hannah and Luke approached her and picked up some of it, they also had a look at the letter and apparently that little shithead is already making her move on well, in this case, on Hana. Huh. Interesting. Or perhaps... I... Uh, wait. Or perhaps should free up my schedules. Uh, I think it would be wise to actually... Free up the schedule for her, right? Why wouldn't we? I mean, you know what I, what we like? Their butler here. Butler is awesome. Uh, free up the schedule. But I guess we can free up a day to meet with you. What's here? Marianne looks likes her. Okay. I don't really need another maudlin Monday reading about Maury anyway. The book club can function without me for one day. Exactly. What time shall we be seeing each other? How does lunch sound? Besides, my house has a higher priority over book club. When we can hold the next meeting in this place. Should the beauty and grandeur of it all will inspire spirited and lively debates about whether modern and writers could match up to the classics. I might as well clear up the rest of my week to handle whatever affairs buying this mansion requires of me. Any social activity can be put off until the Ermengarde, or rather, the right mansion's great debut. Seriously, the right mansion is, doesn't sound so impressive, does it? Ermengarde for? Hmm. I'll have my feel of great parties and gatherings, especially when I organize them myself. That sounds good. Although, with a project of this scope, we might need most of the day to tackle your concerns. A more thorough inspection of the place is also preferable. Breakfast, then. It's a date. It's early not. All right. Monday. Ten o'clock sharp. Marianne is actually kind of shy, isn't she? We'll see you then. Actually, Marianne suggested that we meet in, at night, but who is even awake at that unholy hour? Thank you! I was lucky enough to wake up this morning before Luke went all the way to Cardiff. We say our goodbyes, shake hands and make it clear without outright saying it, that we now own this house. By the time we left the mansion ground, sunset is almost upon us. So, you really want to buy this place then? That's a bit of a big impulse buy, even coming from you. <laughs> Not that I'm complaining. I feel elation when I hear Lut's words from him. It's another day one is able to please someone like Luke. Well, she certainly would be able to please me without any troubles. He gives away false flattery to sway those who stare for his attention and approval. But in the privacy of closed doors, he would often express his grievances. He neither censored himself in front of me, nor spared me from his criticism. You have been saying the penthouse was getting a bit too small for you. Happy anniversary! Oh, that time of the year already? He forgot about it last year too. You bastard! I understand that he's a busy man, but... Is that why you want to buy it? Yes. 
You don't like it? I do. But I remember you used to talk about how you wanted to live next to the beach. Botany K uh, Botany Bay can't remember their sea water that stretched on for miles and miles as far as the eyes can see. As a kid, I loved our beach trips, swing all day as much as I could. I was a well behaved child, and the only time I was ever truly difficult was when I refused to get out of the waters. Even when my fingers had gone all wrinkly, and even when they managed to pull me out of the water, there was always sand castles. The day before we married, I told Luke that I wanted a house on the beach and a dog. And a kid or two. None of those came true seven years later. Interesting. Interesting how people who are capable of like actually having children and giving them basically good life are like not getting children but those who basically can't afford even having children at all are making them like rabbits ridiculous that's what I uh, mentioned before about China is good, you know, you have to pay if you have more than one child, that's great. Anyway, that was the crew, seven years later. That was a childish dream. Living next to the beach is so impractical if you really think about it. I don't know. It's not a bad thought to see you in a bathing suit every day. Yeah. Maybe another time, love. We still have forever, don't we? I mean, technically, you can see her every day in underwear, definitely. No, even without it. He says something, only grabbing my hand and holding tight as we spend the rest of the ride home in silence. I miss the sea. Sick and hovering over the loo at 3 in the morning, the picture I paint right now is hardly glamorous. Uh oh. A horribly fish tasty slept in my mouth as I drew up what I had for dinner, and I hate the acrid stench that fills the lavatory. The burning station at the back of my throat is of no help whatsoever. I can feel another wave of nosy come up on me when the door opens. Hana. What are you doing so early out of bed? I'm fine, love. I must have just eaten something bad. That's all I managed to say before vomiting again into the porcelain throne. Lovely. Just go back to bed, Luke. I'm going to clean up here. I refuse to look at him. I don't want him to see him like this. To, to see me like this. The last time I had a horrible morning reaching to the toilet was during my college years, being the life of the party. Faultless and shameless, I had thrown away months to frivolous merriment and pointless hookups. I didn't even retain any of the connections I had made from the time. Sure, they still know of me, and I still know them, and we still do business from time to time. But I've lost touch with anyone who I didn't see on a daily basis. I hardly have any of the friends I had when I was still Hannah Evans. Teachers, fellow university students, drinking buddies, and all conquests like Jack. What? No, don't touch me, sweetie. It's disgusting. I'm disgusting. Luke sits down next to me on the toilet floor to hold my hair even as I cough up more fish. He wipes the oil from the corner of my mouth and just stares. Do I need to fire someone? I don't feel sick. Just feeling a bit under the weather, dear. It's been unbearably hot as of late, hasn't it? I do wish it would rain. Are you sure it wasn't those sweets? <laughs> I told you not to eat those sweets. <laughs> Maybe. Well, don't laugh. Well, <laughs> I can't help if you make that sort of face. <laughs> he's not chuckling and soon enough he's in a fit of laughter. This seat happening next to a loo filled with sick just makes the whole thing bizarre and it nearly makes me start giggling as well. 
and turned slowly to fall as I smacked you on the shoulder. I'm not making a face, Luke. Stop laughing. Shut up. <laughs> when he would not stop laughing, I let myself go as laughter bubbles from my own throat, and I forget whatever ill feelings plagued me. We we're just husband and wife, laughing together at a funny face. Little things in life. I let myself go because I know that these moments will not last forever. But if I just know that there are things that are to come for us, I will wish with everything I have then and there that the laughter stayed. Wait, what? Probably if I just knew. Oh shit. Uh, hiya! Come on now! Huh. How, how terrible of things are we talking about? Ah, oh, Isabella Santos. Next? Oh, there is anyone. The... During the open house, Hannah pressured the estate to sell her dimension. The rights also meant the interior designer. During at home, Hannah revealed that the mansion is her anniversary gift for dog. Things seemed to be looking good until Hannah suddenly fell ill later that night. Looks burnt. Uh, okay. That's the previous one. From Isabella's room. Okay. The place is bustling with movers, carrying furnishings here and there, along with several trunks of personal belongings taken from a penthouse. Look what's them with like a hawk. Making sure nothing is handled carelessly or gets stolen. Careful now. I know your pictures are framed by cheap plastic, but those are framed by African Blackwood and are one of a kind commissioned paintings. Each one is easily worth a lifetime of what you lot make. Yeah, that's the way to motivate people. Luke, do the dishwashers go into the kitchen or the butler's pantry? Pantry, Buttercup. Careful, that's a mah. No, no, you there, put that down. You do not manhandle a Napoleon Abueva. I can see the expression and I had to send the foreman an apologetic glance. Even Johannes rolls his eyes as he goes by. Because the group is always like this during project, Johannes and I have gotten used to it. Poor Marianne, on the other hand, looks a bit stressed at seeing the gigantic mess before quickly going back to work. Everything just has to be perfect, exactly the way he wants it. One thing out of place, one little thing that didn't fit in the image he could reconstruct in his head, and Luke gets bent out of shape. Sweetie, why don't we go and sort your suits upstairs? Let your Hans and Marianne and the foreman deal with the rest of the work. We have this, Mrs. Wright. Yes, please do go before a blood vessel bursts. Blood stains are so troublesome to clean. <laughs> Taking him by hand, I lead him upstairs into our bedroom. Holy moly. This place has been arranged first so that we can get some rest. You already moved it there, so you... Boy, things are escalating quickly, even before someone arrives again. This place has been arranged first so that we can get some rest, no matter what state the rest of the mansion is in. I'm definitely glad I can just lie down on a soft, comfy bed after what has been a busy morning. Ah. Watching Luke, uh, Luke act like his life depended on he getting his move done is starting all on soon. And to think I have a whole day of this ahead of me. I feel the bed deep beside me as Luke sits down with a sigh. Well, I can't wait for this to be over. I don't know, it's fun seeing you all fired up. Here at home and not at work, you know. You know I can't always be home, Hana. I have a company to run, unless you've forgotten. I haven't forgotten. You're the one who insists on being there to make sure each and every little thing is under control. I just... I just really miss you sometimes, and I wish you were at home more often. Why, if you're not careful, I might go a bit loopy and I'll start bringing cats home. Hmm. And soon enough, one day, you'll find yourself going home to a farm just filled with felines that follow you everywhere. Oh, don't bluff. The things would shred up your precious furniture. Besides, you don't even like cats. True, true. Dogs are infinitely superior, of course. 
Thank you! Screenshot this. Hana, I like you a lot now. By saying this. But what about the wet dog smell? The mess. I'm not cleaning up after a mutt, no matter how cute. We'll see about that. If you think about it, a cat would be better. No, it wouldn't be. <laughs> we laugh. It's not always that we can just lie down and talk about these sorts of things. To joke around, as if we're teenagers again. With very little problem in the way of responsibilities and roles. To hear has genuine, honest to godness laughter is a rarity. This is just the second time, as of late, and I can see it as signs of good things to come. Yeah! All good points. I guess we could just have kids. That is, if you prefer dealing with soil nappies and sick as opposed to dead birds, mice, and litter boxes. That's why dogs are better. Even than kids. I've already told Marianne about turning the second bedroom into a children's room. Uh, I guess sometimes I don't know when I'm crossing a line. I didn't say that I'm a good comedian, did I? Not this again. What? I... I wasn't being serious. It's not something you take the piss out of. Having a kid is a big responsibility. Exactly. We've talked about this, haven't we? We... I'm... not ready to be a parent. I'd probably end up killing the little brat by the week's end. You will be a great father. Or... Apologize for bringing it up. Now, this is a tough question, no matter how you look at it. I mean... Okay, so... If we apologize for bringing the topic up... He'll probably be pleased by that, right? and so on. If we say you will be a great father, he might be pleased about that as well. You know what? Let's go with what Hannah would like. Because she basically wants kids, right? So let's go with this. Let's go with this text. Carly likes you well enough. Who? Who's Kylie? The mention of our little goddaughter places a conflict look on his face. Sometimes it is cute when he denies having a spot for the little girl. But then sometimes it's sad, and he thinks you wonder what happened to make him think so poorly of himself in this regard. Yes, well, it's Kylie. The tyke likes everybody and, on the off chance she doesn't, likes them well enough as long as they buy her sweets. And sure, that kid is great. But if I get tired of her, I can ship her back to her father at the end of the day. Yes! Having kids of our own will be a whole different monster entirely. <laughs> I never heard him talk about his father in anything but a business context. I recall Damien Wright kept hearing about him from my own father even before I met Luke. The business world praised him for running a tight ship, all until one mistake led to a great loss for the Enterprise. It was then... That the news of Luke Ryan, Prodigy Zone, and successor to the old man started to show up, and he had that in its recovery and growth up until the Great Recession. Get a bit of track. Regardless, I have never heard him talk about his father like one would talk about family. I think you'll be a great father. <laughs> there is a smile, no matter how half hearted it may be. I don't really think that. He might not be a good, honest man, a part of me knows it, for I try to silence it. But I know look well enough that he will be a better father than either Damian Rightfall or Henry Evans. I love my father, but he never had the time. If it is any consolation, I think you'd be a decent mother. Yeah. On the other hand, I have never heard of his mother. A silence settles, both comfortable and uncomfortable. There's a familiarity in each other's company despite the awkwardness that had transpired. Defenses and masks down without anybody's looking, we are both together and alone in this quiet 
Uh oh, body crash from downstairs turtles us both out of our river, yeah. Luke lets out a heavy sigh before coming up to his seat and straightening his jacket. I'll have to attend to that then. Be good, darling. And watch out for your blood pressure. He gives me a kiss on the cheek before leaving, while I lay there in days. Alone as per usual. Okay, right now I'm worried. The text alone makes me worried. The right couple moved to their newly bought mansion today and was already preparing for a housewarming party. During a short break, the couple had a brief discussion about children. Luke didn't sound too welcoming of the idea. Yeah, just buy some dogs, damn it. Party should be used to it by now. I can feel the minutes stick by with me just lying there, feeling miserable and full of self pity. I have rolled over to lie on my stomach at this point with my face buried in the pillows when there's a knock at the door. Gum grumbling at them to go away doesn't work as a voice comes from the other side. Madam, the photographer from Luxury Living is here. Wait, is that today? Oh yeah. People had caught wind of our new mansion the very moment we left the open house. Luke had boasted he could acquire the property in no time and to load the photo shoot for an interior design magazine to be scheduled today. Well, there were complications and took longer than usually does for us. In a minute, Hansi. Johannes, if you could at least make it through the end. <laughs> Tell them I'll be right down, Hansi. I love this guy. I mean, he's awesome. He's also. Anyway, let's end the episode. And hopefully in the next one, there will be more of Johannes. I really hope for that. Uh, see you there. Bye-bye.